Hello, Isopod friends. Today on Ice TV, we will talk about Armadilidium nasatum. So let's get started. Let's start with a wild type, commonly called nosy, in the hobby. So this is the original mutation found in nature. It's dark gray in coloration. The main distinguishing features are the pale longitudinal stripe that run across from the head to the rear that gives a semi-translucent appearance, and the rectangular protrusion towards the apex of the head. So remember that last one. Since we're talking about distinguishing characteristics, let's jump to taxonomy. It belongs to family Armadillididae. This family has a triangular or trapezoidal shaped telson. There's also a family called Armadillidae. This has an hourglass telson. Okay, so this is called Armadillididae and the other one is called Armadillidae. Remember, taxonomy's language is Latin and Latin tends to do that. To put this into perspective, the descendant languages of Latin, like the Romance languages, like Spanish or French, has conjugation. It's similar to that. As for the genus, it's Armadillidium. This has a segmented body that rolls into a perfect ball. Examples of this genus are Armadillidium vulgare and Armadillidium nasatum. So, what's the difference between vulgare and nasatum? For starters, almost all genera of armadilidium form a complete ball, except armadilidium depressum and nasatum. The tail of nasatum has a rounded tip with incurved sides, as opposed to most genus armadilidium species, which has a flat tail. So, nasatum is what we would call taxonomic exceptions or a very special armadillidium. Remember the rectangular protrusion towards the apex of the head that we mentioned earlier? It actually looks like a nose. Actually, that's how it got its name nasatum. So armadillidium nasatum is the only armadillidium that looks like it has a nose, hence the name armadillidium nasatum. So next time you collect isopod in your yard and you see that it has a trapezoidal telson, it rolls into a ball, and looks like it has a nose, it's Armadillidium nasatum. That's the practical application of the science of taxonomy. It's basically describing an organism. For the size, it can reach up to 21 millimeters or 2.1 centimeters. But it's hard to find an adult larger than 15 millimeters or 1.5 centimeters. I had this culture for almost three years now and I just hadn't found a large adult. So Nasatum is a little smaller than Vulgare. When it comes to shape, it's more oblong than round compared to like a Vulgare or a Gestroy. The lifespan is about two years. When it comes to reproduction, females can reproduce high numbers of mankai, but the mankais often stay very small for a few months. Please take note of this and we'll go back when we talk about humidity. Also, the mankai, like any other amadilidium, are lighter in color and they darken as they mature. They also stay in a ball when they're disturbed for a few minutes. Unlike the adults, they can uncurl within just a few seconds like what I showed in my video earlier. They are originally from Northern and Southern Europe and they have been accidentally introduced worldwide by humans through agriculture. Armadillidium nasatum is a very hardy isopod. They can tolerate a variety of conditions like low ventilation, high humidity, and even drier habitats. Yes, they're hardier than Armadillidium vulgare. That's why they're perfect as a cleanup crew for almost all various types of terrarium. 
when it comes to my setup, my enclosure is a bit on the moist side. It's just because of the mankais. They require higher humidity. And I mentioned earlier that you won't see them because they're very, very small and they remain like that for months. These isopods are very forgiving and hardy. That's why it's very rare to have a complete die off. They tend to cling even with a dry environment or a very high humidity. It's just they won't thrive. That's why I don't know if you've noticed even though your enclosure is not thriving but there's still some isopods. For care, it's the same as any Armadillidium species. But they are hardier, so this is a very good isopod for beginners. Now let's go to color morphs. As of the making of this video, there are four morphs of Nasatum, including the wild type that we just discussed that's available here in the United States. So let's start. The first one is the peach. This is the orange mutation form of the gray wild type. It's more of a peach in color than orange. And it has the same longitudinal stripe from the head to the rear part. The adults will breed year round, but the juveniles can take from one year or even more to reach maturity. I'd like to direct your attention to this one here. This one looks like it has more of a yellow pattern, so I will separate this from the stock later. My culture of the Nasadum peach is thriving right now because I keep my enclosure moist. The mankais needs high humidity and you won't see them. Um, they're most likely to be burrowing underneath the substrate. They will just go up when they're juveniles. And if your substrate is dry, they will probably just desiccate. So if your culture is not thriving right now, try making your substrate a little moist. It's for the mankai. And the survival of the mankais into adulthood would boost your population. The next morph is pearl. So this is the pied form of Nasatum. Unlike other pied form found in some isopod, this has a very little dark coloration in them. They're often very pale, but not quite very white. You know, it's it's like a little, kind of a little darkish. So it's like a pearl. So this is an example of a peered form that has more of a black speckles in them. Well, the pearl has black eyes. Well, the right term for that is osily. Well, an osily is essentially consists of a single cells and they can only detect light. They cannot see color. They use their eyes to run away from light. That's why when you open your enclosure, they run right away. They prefer dark spaces because dark spaces promote dampness and decay. So this prevents them from drying. And um, with their antenna, they use it to seek humidity. One last thing about the pearl morph that I like to point out is that black line that's visible in their period is their digested food in their digestive tract. The last color morph is the whiteout. So this term is used in the isopod hobby when they're completely white, even their eyes or ocelli. Unlike the pearl color morph, which can display spotting or black speckles, this one is a true albino form. So look at this one. Um, we're looking at the head part of the isopod. You can't really see a um, black eyes or a black ocelli. All you see is like really this white head. That's why we call it white out.
both pearl and white has that longitudinal margin across its period it's just not visible because of the coloration that's white but if you look closer you'll see it it's the species distinguishing characteristics and of course the nose this one is a little yellowish Sometimes their coloration is affected by the food they just ate. Remember the isopod that has a lot of yellow markings from my peach culture? Well, I've isolated it and I'm going to see if I can create a new color morph. That's one of the most interesting and rewarding thing about uh, isopod breeding is you can create a new color morph by just isolating the ones that exhibit a genetic mutation, in this case a deviation in color. And I think I'm gonna call this pineapple project. Well thank you so much isopod friends for sticking with me. I plan to do more videos this year about color morphs on Porcelio hassi, Armadillidum vulgare, Porcelio ornatus, and Porcelio scaber which is probably going to be divided into part one and part two because they have a lot of color morphs. Thank you so much.